old are you? No, really. Every time someone asks you this question, how old you are, you think of a number, your chronological age. Basically, how long you've lived on this planet. However, what the age 50 may represent to you may mean something completely different to me. Of course, we have all heard some version of age is just a number, haven't we? Unfortunately, aging is not. Growing up, I was blessed. My grandparents were a big part of my life. They lived with us. Fun for me, not sure it was as fun for them. <laughs> Imagine living with your kids and your grandkids through your old age, all in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. Ugh. Anyway, both my grandparents lived to be 83. When I looked up at my grandfather, all I saw was a superhero. Never really saw him sick, except the last three months of his life. He was very active, picked me up from school every day, did my homework with me, played with me, and even discussed world affairs. He was sharp as a tack. My grandmother, on the other hand, ah, oh, she could not remember who I was for the last seven or eight years of her life. She was bedridden for the last few, suffering from multiple morbidities, frail, and completely dependent on her family. Really, no quality of life. So from a very young age, the fundamental question that haunted me was, why, why do people age differently? When you think about age, you think about how old you are, your chronological age, what's written on your license, correct? But you don't think about how old you actually feel, how much wear and tear your body has accumulated through age. This would be your biological age. And this distinction between biological versus chronological age is an important one. Because again, people age differently. Aging is the global social economical challenge of this century. In about 30 years, one in six people, look around you, one in six people globally will be about the age of 65. With an increase in age, there's an increased incidence of several chronic diseases, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. Even if we can cure one of these chronic diseases completely, let's say, for instance, cancer, it will only be replaced by another chronic degenerative disease. What this translates to is a tremendous pressure on our health care and a personal commitment from our young to take care of our elderly. And I saw this firsthand through my family taking care of my grandmother, changing her, feeding her, bathing her for a really long time. Are we really ready for such a gray tsunami? Instead of finding one cure at a time for one chronic disease, my lab at the Aging Institute, University of Pittsburgh, is trying to target the root cause of it all and find interventions to delay aging. The goal is not to live to be 150, but instead be healthy, active, and contributing members of our society well into our prime years. But there is a bigger challenge before we can apply such interventions. We need a defined way to assess our biological age. A biological aging test of some kind. So this is an integral problem that my lab, along with a team of talented geriatricians, data analysts, and biologists are trying to define. How are we doing this? We are looking at 
what is inherently different between early agers or fast agers like my grandmother versus healthy agers or slow agers like my grandfather. And we are trying to find a unique fingerprint that would distinguish between these two groups. Our work, along with several other labs, has identified that as we age, we accumulate something called zombie cells. Why are these cells called zombie cells? Because they live in our body for a really long time and refuse to die easily. These cells were once normal, but with age, they have encountered several um, chronic damage, such as DNA damage or viral infection. This has left them weak and impaired, giving them basically one of two choices, either to die or to enter a state of permanent hibernation and become senescent. These cells choose to hibernate. What is even more interesting is that these zombie or senescent cells start releasing harmful inflammation signals to their neighboring cells, making them dysfunctional in the process. In fact, at least in animal models, if we can get rid of these zombie or senescent cells and their chemical signals using specific drugs, these mice are left rejuvenated and young-like. Being on the team that identified such drugs, this was a huge aha moment for me. I realized that such interventions to delay aging would be a reality one day. So for the first part of this work, we are looking at the burden of senescent or zombie cells in fast agers versus slow agers. The second part of this work is metabolic profiling. In order to function, our bodies release thousands of small, unique molecules, chemical fingerprints, if you will. These are intermediates and end products of our everyday metabolism. These metabolites are direct effectors of our physical state and inform us on how we feel. This part is the most exciting to me. Because with the recent advances in this technology, we can create an ID for each one of us by capturing all our chemical fingerprints in one place. So we are taking a unique approach. We are combining metabolic profiling with senescence profiling to come up with a clock that could predict your biological age. Imagine this, in the future, when you go to your doctor's office for an annual exam, a simple blood test could inform us on your biological age. By catching your risk to be a fast ager, we can perhaps, perhaps, personalize your intervention. Sometimes it could be as simple as a lifestyle modification like exercise or a simple diet, and in other cases, it may be prescribing targeted medication. For example, if you have accumulated a number of these zombie cells, maybe a pill to get rid of these cells. To help you live healthier, to make you feel younger, 20 years younger than your actual chronological age. Of course, this work is not ready to go prime time yet. There are a number of challenges we have to first see how accurate, reliable, and confident such a test would be to predict your biological age. And we have started our work with a very well-defined population, all about the age of 65, that we can group into fast agers or slow agers. In the future, we will have to see how early on can you start distinguishing between your biological versus your chronological age. That is, when you're 35, are you fit as a fiddle? And biologically like a 25-year-old, like me? <laughs> or 
are you headed towards accelerated aging? And so to end, I want to leave you thinking of Johanna Koss. She is a 94-year-old grandmother and an extremely fit gymnast. Wouldn't we all want to live like her, be like her, young forever? Sorry, I meant to say young forever-ish. Thank you. Thank you.